I really love the, the Gippsland Lakes. So, so I grew up in Meetung, so I was very fortunate. I lived right next to the lakes. Um, so I'm in the Department of Chemistry, um, so teaching chemistry and also following my passion in, in the environmental chemistry field. And now picking up the, 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 the thing that piqued my interest in my childhood, looking at what affects water quality, particularly in coastal areas. So a highlight of my research is on, on sandy sediments. So sediments are a very important site for nutrients being recycled, so being returned to the water column. Yet despite the fact that sands dominate um, the, the coastal zone, we really don't understand how nutrients are recycled in that sediment type. So my recent research has come up with some very interesting breakthroughs in terms of how nitrogen is recycled in those environments. And we're finding that nitrogen actually is recycled much more efficiently back into the water column. One of the major uh, pressures on coastal areas is population growth. So with population growth comes um, increasing land use intensity, so more nutrients coming off the catchment, which can change fundamentally how estuaries um, function, so ecologically, so potentially that can lead to algal blooms like um, we've seen in the Gippsland Lakes. Um, and it can also lead to loss of um, what we call seagrass, a plant that lives on the bottom of estuaries. It's an important habitat for fish, uh, more important for food source for certain birds like swans, for example. More seagrass indicates a, a more pristine system or a, or a system in, in better ecological health. Me and my research group are really, I think, very, um, we're able to really identify the key drivers and focus on those and then provide advice um, uh, in terms of what are the key, key levers or key management or key things that need to be regulated to, um, to help improve the ecological health of, of coastal systems. Um, so historically science has in some ways been, been quite solitary, but certainly in the modern era we realise that we need to, to solve problems, we need to work across disciplines and there's, you, you just physically can't get enough into your head to work by yourself when you're doing multidisciplinary research. So excellent multidisciplinary research is really about communication. It's joining the dots. It's getting excellent people in their field who know what they're doing and then connecting that all up into, into the bigger picture story. And I suppose that's what I really enjoy doing is joining the dots. I see really myself as, as, a, as a dot joiner and, and I'm very fortunate to be able to work with such excellent people um, both in the wider industry and government and, and, and also on the, on the coalface um, with postdocs and PhDs who, who really have that, have that fundamental knowledge.